Oh, where you watch? Look where you watch. No, where you watch. Choose the right thing to watch. And this enough to watch. Sticky Stucky Sweet TV with Keith Gargan, Facebook and YouTube. And that enough to watch. The movie star flight take off from Pelper Time TV. So that. Boom. A big sound of a big tune. Ja all is Emmanuel I woe Ja Gideon I'm a Gideon The Gideon I'm a Gideon The Gideon I'm a Gideon Well, Gideon go bustin' out the mat Again, so much oppression Poor people face right now Them crying out for freedom Them crying out for free speech Then, said them want to stand up Like them black liberators Like Malcolm X and Martin Luther And the ancient monarchy Where come pay of the way, sir Free up black people from me Tear down them fence, yeah Gideon, I'm a Gideon The Gideon, I'm a Gideon the Gideon, I'm a Gideon, well The Gideon go bustin' out the mat I listen, I see, I, the power of the Trinity Give us the teaching of His Majesty And we know war, not every... Blue, Mr. Gargan, blue Blue till me dance up me toe This is Sticky Stucky Sweet TV with Keith Gargan. Good, healthy food with the X Factor. So give it a like, share, subscribe, and touch up that notification bell. And that is it. Look at that. So she did them come on and see them do journalism and then do research. And come and make themselves look like a boo-boo over the year when people ask them and them don't know nothing about the Skateland landmark and that was a that was a landmark where everybody and them a big, big girl. And it is the closest direct hit that Jamaica has had in 30 years. Closest to a direct hit. And we were all convinced that this hurricane was going to hit Jamaica directly. Deliver me from my enemy, my God. Set me an eye from those who rise up against me. Deliver me from the workers of iniquity. Save me from the bloodthirsty men. For the only lion wait for my soul. The mighty gather themselves together against me, not for my disobedience, not for my sin, Lord. I have done no wrong, yet they are ready to attack me. Rise up, behold, and help me. You, Lord God of armor, the God of Israel, rouse yourself to punish the nation. Show no mercy to the wicked, traitor, sealer. They return at evening, holy like dogs, and crawl around the city. Behold, they spot with their mouth, so they in their lips, for they say, Who art us? But you, Lord, laugh at them, you scoff of all the nation. O oh, my strength, I wish for you, for God is my eye tower. My God will go before me with his loving kindness. God will let me look at my enemy in triumph. Don't kill them, or my people may forget. Scatter them by their power and bring them down, Lord, our shield. For the sin of their mouth and the words of their lips, let they be catching their pride. For the causes and lies which they utter, Consume them in war, consume them, and they will be no more. Let them know that God rules in Jacob to the ends of the earth. Sila, at evening let them return, let them owl like a dog, and go around the city. They shall wander up and down for food, and wait all night, if they ain't satisfied. But I will sing of your strength, yes, I will sing a load of your loving kindness in the morning, for you have been my eye tower, a refuge in the day of my distress. To you, my strength, I will sing praises, for God is my eye tower, the God of my mercy, Sila. Up, up and running, up and gunning, Sticky Stucky Sweet TV, Keith Gargan. Cassava, passava, man over matter, up and running, yeah man. Anyway, me take a puff of my little spliff here, because I want to get into this one here, quick and fast, because me see something and it catch my eye, and cause, you know, you, you, you scroll through the things them, and you know, whether you're young or whatever, but watch the platform them, and see what's going on over there, so you can get an uh, idea that who oh, really a flip flop or whatever. But anyway, you know, as usually, me usually follow the fix, because I know so well then, Ari and Naro, Naro name, forgive me if it's not his name that, you know, but anyway, them are two uptown little people. They go to university and things like that. And Rayty and Lele. But there's nothing wrong with find, try to find a career. If they want to come in um, journalism or whatever. But them pick. Because a lot of people, you know, the foreigner them do, they just pick from dance hall for them one benefit. 
Some of them use it, refuse it, make money and don't respect nobody. But dance all of my easy thing with people can do. I mean, notice that, you know, can just pick pan, you know. And sometimes they come in and they make loads of money too. And we like the foundation from original. We don't really have um, success with that, like how them commandos chat fuckery and humoristic things and things like that. So, anyway, Ari and Nara, I think it's Nara and him. I don't remember, but I don't know. Them is the house with the fix podcast, okay? Them change to that anyway. Well, Nara, the same little brother with the um, spies to tell him to go. Scuba diving their mother and things like that. I don't remember that interview there. So, you know, them always try to... Um, but as I'm saying, a lot of people run go over there, so, you know, but sometimes when you go run go over there, so it's just really like when I try to get relevant and things because them not really... Them is not a good interviewer. You see, like, how teach them with, like, mature and ask proper questions at the right time and things like that. Because me, personally, as a is producer, with big tune and a my sleeve. Muno want Muno never run go with us or something they want to really um Although them not gonna call me anyway, because them not do them research and you know nothing about certain songs. Because even Ari herself, one at a time a good while now when we just start to watch them. They never she never know nothing about Skateland. Big girl like that. So she then come on and see them do journalism and then do research and come and make themselves look like a boo-boo over the year when people ask them and them don't know nothing about the Skateland landmark and that was a that was one um, landmark where everybody and them a big big girl and 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 us yeah let me tell you something anyway that is not the thing anyway we say come out I don't know you see that's when Nigel Clark gone now because them can't get no. They're afraid for the because the reason why Nigel Clark go there, you know. They're all uptown and them now go ask him now. He's, he may go try to manipulate them anyway. And him know that. And him use that. You can't see this guy sitting down and just manipulate them. And him there they ask him some soft question. And the one area she she just like chat and interrupt and things like that. And ask no sensible question. And I she dip on. <laughs> and I laugh. She full of um, You know what she full of, you know. But she, I don't fear. You don't know, you want to deal with her or deal with. Just keep it. And go on along. And go along with the um, interview with musician, with dancer. When you start, start off as. But nobody come to about that interview politician. Because I'm making myself look full fool and thing like that. And you know, it never make no sense. Nigel Clark just come there because I know he can manipulate, you know. And he knows say, well then him thinks he can get the message across. But people like we always see it, well especially me, me just bore some whole night and drill some whole night and I that me I do right now. Cause it never make no sense. He just sit on the cool cool and easy. And when he did ask and I laugh, gig 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 and ask and the guy is the one of the liest thing on earth. With him and Andrew, Andrew Wallace, right? Because remember, you know, Andrew Wallace, Juliet Wallace, and Nigel Clark, and them run the party, you know. Right? Also, the, the Prime Minister, the Speaker of the House, and the Finance Minister. That's why I'm coming out of that day, and I defend Juliet Wallace. Anyway, so them now ask him no question. The guy just did that tell pure lie and attack things when they're relevant and all them things. Say. But you know, we hear the interview people, and you can pick sense out of nonsense or nonsense out of sense if anything go like that. Because me don't understand. So me I tell you no you know one good man because you know when you do that with spice, you know, and spice in ocean or out and tell you no we shall forgot forgot dive, you know. And we say kinda of the same thing because when it does like mix up and and and, and you know, really go to the beef of the matter. You know what I mean? If you do interview Nothing a good interview you can do with um, a little young artist. Can't be a joke no depend on um, laughing, laughing thing. It no make no sense. It no serious. And now Nigel Clark said he can't go around, you know. He's jumping on an ad seat. And um, start to in someone uh, interview Nigel Clark. And this man does attack, 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 make him, make him just attack like 
that is not an interview, that's a talk shop and things like that. Why no, why no bother with that for? This is a liar, man. We just do a budget other day, you know. When I interview, you know. We, take, we have 15 error in our budget. 15 error, you know. False budget, him do. I read that different budget and I send it to the, send it to the nation. Right? Boy, I tell you to rest for I me not understand how them people can't really get away them things right now in these modern days, you know. And when you come and this be people about them, I interview this guy here. Yeah, and I talk about yeah, well, uh, I one little question me and uh nah, run. Well, whatever the, the, the brother asks not like, you know. Look like him not supposed to do that out of shame or something. One and then he met Nigel Clark, does, um, I never question nothing. He marks the man about transparency in the government. And Nigel Clark cross glad, oh, we are the most transparency government and Rete and Lele. And he met the man does, uh, go on from this uh, and I tell him, send him transparency and him do this. And you know, come back and he say, hold on, hold on, use transparency. So what happened to the SSL thing where, um, you know, Everybody knows you tell pure lie up till now about FBI and all them things. They're not like that. And now when you drop on them rascal, you see the transparency when you talk about transparency. Now the budget of you really um is a big mistake in the budget. And him never there nowhere in parliament. And Juliet Wallace never there nowhere in parliament the other day. A feel what is she name? Fieval Williams, educational minister, will take the ramp, the ramp. And then even our one minister, Ton Panar, Evel Hamilton, and I put her up on the spot because she had tell pure lie. She, had, she, she come to do the dirty work for Nigel Clark. And we and not for me, I said them that grand came on in it. He and Juliet Willis, that grand came on, the minister from the parliament, <laughs> in a crucial time like now. Right? And things like that. In a crucial time like now. And believe you me. These people. Are and think about she them. I interview this brother. Yeah, make him have him one way. And I talk about transparency. And rate. Look at this now. 15 error. A uh, error. Error. Anything you want to call it. You have not this budget, you know, 15. Imagine that, you know, when we read out to the nation and boast on it and then beat this, boom, 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 beat this. And, and now the eggs spill all over them face. That's Juliet, who lets her run out of the house. They never, she had the house of fucking arm and, and they deal with the, 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 the nation business. But she had the house when she needs to fucking arm. Wall back things that them people are really something else, you know. But anyway, the thing is about Nigel Clark. And believe you me, no civil servant not gonna get paid till next month, you know. Even yeah, no civil servant now get paid till next month. Because the budget of you go back about go go to about three more body now before it approve and then you go to the a governor general. Imagine a budget where them just read, you know. And when other day, when um, Mark Golden come out and rave and things like that, them walk out and all them things. Eh. This is the same budget where them walk out for another day, you know. So I'm actually sure how so, oh, things can really come back to harm people, people. Right? And when we see these like, two young people, uptown people, them excel them go to university, top school and blah blah. But you don't need you know couldn't go to university no fool, but you don't have no common sense and believe, believe you me, you know, bluff. Because you know, ask one little question, but kinda of hard. But uh, and the man does um licking out licking off for six, just a uh, keep going. Because you know, let him off of the hook. Make him tell about them are the most transparency government. You look at that, I wanna you know, lick him back with nothing. That will never happen with Andrew Stephen. Because I'm not sure you say Andrew Stephen might never go as far on go as when him say in a universal in university um study, you know. 
like him drop out or something. I think we might go all the way because so we both and go on. But we don't have no sense. We don't have no common sense. So that's why we can't put it together. And that's all it is. Yeah, man. Some of say right now, you know, make Nigel Clark talk, talk, and then women like again, the man go down and blame now about the um the the, the, the situation of the the, the, the situation of the, the um, finance thing. He might blame um from from what about from seventies. Imagine that, and them little people sit down there so, and make them man go back from seventies when them have eight years in the party a rule. As the government, and he might gone back to 1970. He might go blame Manly now. He might go blame um. He might talk about you couldn't get no fish. You have to buy this and marry things. You remember them time about you up now? Who cause it? Labour Party cause it. Because Manly was like more inclined with the Cuban Castro. And she had to come and say, well, then, oh, it's community, community, commu um, communist country and things like that when he's socialist. And then America side with Siago now. And that, that's why I just said things start from you know. But him not talk about that. And them little pitney then work you call them some little idiot pitney about them and do interview. Uptown. Cause them are the same um, them, they, yeah, I'm tell you something like them not really are doing no research as Mr. People. If you know say well then them couldn't make a man at their brother talk like that, a little liar like clock talk like that. And no one have nothing to do with the substance of what they are talking about. Right? I talk about. You see him, him shoot himself right in foot again, because I talk about when people have to marry things, you have to buy rice, you're going to get that, you're going to get that, and you have to buy this to get that. That is um labor right do that. Because them they 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 team up with the um, American. And the American, you know, the American fight against communists. And Cuba, they put an embargo upon Cuba, all them things there. They don't want nothing to look for. And that make Cuba suffer all up to the, to the you know. So that little that reach Jamaica. And I, I see you go in car sitting at the JLP. And this man I come talk. And them little pitney there, as me say, in the so. I listen to this brother, you now no counteraction for him. So me I say he's a local dead stock. Dead stock. When I say dead stock, interview. And it's full of shit. I'm just bored with all them in it. I'm going to hear the interview people and they can't hear what I say. You know, it makes no sense. That's why I know. Mean, it's a JLP party. JLP party, you know, all right, put it this way. A party shop run better than um, run better than them, you know. A party shop run better than them. Because remember, you know, people talk about TV. People are run things like a party shop. But party shop run good. Because party shop people have to, you have to imply people to keep that place clean. That's a number one. Parliament not clean. It's stink and dirty. Pure gutter night. That's number one. So you know party shop run better than GLP government. So what we call GLP government. The J stand for yeah, GLP. And the L stand for lie. And the P stand for party. So it's JLP. So J so no 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 no. Me go back again. The J stand for Jamaica. The L stand for lie. And the P stand for party. So it's Jamaica Liad Party. Not Jamaica, not 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 JLP party. Jamaica Liad Party. Yeah man. Everybody lied. The whole rascal lot, lot of them then just lie, 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 lie. You know? And people just yeah, let me tell you something, man. What do you know here? Don't know further ado. Let's get in the video. Boom. That's an example of a microeconomic structural intervention that can help to even prices out. I'm nodding like I know what. <laughs> yeah, no, okay. That's it. No, meaning that is something that the government can do. Yeah. yeah? And I know that I believe it's something that the Minister of Agriculture is working yeah. on. There, there's a lot of conversation right now surrounding transparency. Now, is, is there bits and pieces of information that you know that if you are to communicate this to the public, there may be, as you talk about consequences, that it's probably too sensitive to be communicated. But you know that, you know, it's 
the, the, the issue of transparency is going to come up. Are there things out there that you just pre mm, This is just too big for me the people know about. No, let me let me approach the question this way. There, there are channels through which information is provided. So speaking mm. about numbers and f- numbers of the government and so on, yeah. you know, numbers are provided at the end of the month or at the end of the quarter, end of the year. It would be inappropriate, you know, before that period to come out and say the numbers are X. Mm. OK, so I am a fervent believer in transparency of government as someone who has come directly from no, 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 sir. Me have to really come in upon this again. Me have to interrupt and come in upon this. The man says he's a firm believer. Well, me not talk about man. This guy says he's a firm. Ligel Clark says he's a firm believer in transparency. Imagine that. Him have the heart to say that. People, this is the most corrupted liar, this brother and thing like that. We hide up things. I talk a lot of things. Just imagine this man talking like that. <laughs> yo, yo, me I tell you, says he's a fir- firm believer of transparency. You know, so that's what I say you now. This is the real, real Jamaica liar party, you know, believe you me. Just look on the SSL saga, how this man tell lie. And I try to cover up things and I think. But as I touch on one thing, you know, there's so much things. Look much things, this brother, I am do. We're far from transparency, you know. The SSL, you know, with all these lies, we cover up and cover up for him, for him and his colleagues, him and the Prime Minister. That is one, you know. And him come back and have the reader budget and have 15 error in it. Right? And then when. It come to light now. He can be found. Juliet Wallace can be found in the parliament. It down to the poor little look woman that look like she like something wrong with her. He can't move. But she named Fieval Williams. She didn't put the pressure upon. That's even a one member attack her because, you know, that is um Warmilton. Because imagine that, you know, I said that in nothing like that in the parliament. Because she had a bullshit. And the finance minister who made the 15 error can be fine. And him now, upon this program, I talk about him a firm believer in transparency. And there's so much things to talk about, but we're not going to talk over this interview upon that. But just to give you an example, what are wicked people them? And that's why we beat them, like, um, we call it... Um, Nara and um, what's your name? I do the interview, right? Because they don't really do no research and they just make the man get away with everything. But anyway, it's a big, big, big and serious situation in everything. But here, uh, what up now? We're not going to really run over this original interview. So we we'll go back to what we are listening to and what he must say. Yeah, man. Can't. Don't reverse yourself. The original you was a better you. Don't reverse yourself that way. I am a fervent believer in transparency of government. As someone who has come directly from the people into the politics, meaning yeah. that I've you know have had a lateral transfer. I didn't come into politics at a young age and grow up in it. Mm-hmm you must be able to appreciate that I appreciate uh, the, the value of transparency to the citizen because that's what I wanted yeah. when I was sort of uh, not in public service. Mm-hmm. Okay? And I've made, certainly the government has made stranded efforts in transparency. Not, they don't get, the government hasn't gotten a lot of credit for it, but the government has if you examine it. And speaking from my portfolio and where I am, I have been a strident advocate of transparency in the changes that we've made. We have deepened fiscal transparency by passing legislation to bring a fiscal commission into place, appointing a fiscal commissioner who has access to all of government finances. Mm-hmm. Uh, is, the office is not yet established, but that is a credible and real example of a commitment to transparency. Monetary transparency. We made a central bank independent, which means that they are 
unfettered in pursuing low and stable inflation and in reporting to the Jamaican people on monetary matters. That is real transparency. We have passed legislation to make the appointment to public boards a transparent one where people can apply and have their names included and everyone has to go through the same process. So transparency is something that is central and very important to me as an individual and it's very important to the government. And part of the reason I ask that question because there's this point of contention surrounding uh, receivables. And when Mark Golden asked you about them, you know, you said it was market sensitive. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I asked him about it. Um, I'm not sure if it's a response, but why, why, why do you say it's market sensitive? Okay, so let me give you an example. We, in, this, in the budget, we are repaying $300 billion worth of loans well, sorry, we are borrowing $200 billion this year to finance the budget, right? Mm. Which is normal housekeeping. Our debt is coming down mm. you know, as a percentage of GDP and staying stable in absolute terms. But the operations this year involves $200 billion of new debt. I'm not coming out, I'm not required to, nor do I come out and say uh, we're selling $50 billion worth of bonds in June at 6%. Or even saying we're going to U.S. dollar bonds or Jamaican dollar bonds. I'm not giving any details whatsoever. Mm. The only thing that is there is that we are raising $200 billion worth of debt. Okay? And the reason, and I'm not unique in that, that is the practice. That is how it is and has been. Because to do otherwise would be to potentially jeopardize those transactions. Mm. So at the time of the transaction, you come out and you say, Right. So as I have done with the transactions that we've done, certainly the groundbreaking ones, when we had the first Jamaican dollar bond issue, I don't know if your viewers are aware of that, that just last November, for the first time in Jamaica's history, we were able to persuade international lenders to lend us in Jamaican dollars. Hmm. Big deal. Yeah. Big, big <laughs> deal. I'd love to be able to talk about that maybe another time with your viewers. Big deal. That, you know, massive progress. So when that happens, you know, we come out and we tell you everything. Yeah. yeah? I, I have been, you know, I've been transparent in coming out and saying how we're going to finance it by saying that we're going to do this transaction. That is the transparency that's required at this time. I mean, on the issue, not to cut you, but the opposition spokesperson, um, Julian Robertson, hmm. said that, you know, the need for transparency should trump market sensitivity yeah so you said that. And, and, and i look as i said i believe in transparency we don't mm. what we don't want to do is you know use uh these buckets and then make it appear as if you're against transparency that's a that political craft mm. to try and frame something as if it is market sensitivity vis-a-vis -vis transparency this is nothing to do this is not a debate about transparency mm. we are transparent i am transparent in the fiscal affair, in my portfolio, the fiscal affairs of the country, the economic affairs of the country. And we are and will be transparent with this transaction. What we're saying is, and you have to, you know, take me seriously on it. If that transaction doesn't work, that could be a problem. And I'm saying to you that saying too much about it, mm -hmm. I'm going to give you a real example in a second. Yeah. I'm mm -hmm. going to give it to you. Saying too much about it could jeopardize it. Let me give you the real example. We also plan this year to float a catastrophe bond. Explain, please. Okay. What? <laughs> <laughs> That's some <a> doom. <laughs> Jamaica became... I, I, I need to, you need to invite me back, you know. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, well, yeah, well, yeah. Because, because when Jab is here too, she does a yeah, great man, impression when of people, it. Uh, yeah, <laughs> man, bring, on, bring it on, bring it on. So Jamaica became the first small country in the world, mm. right, to issue independently something that is known as a catastrophe bond. We're a small country that is susceptible, vulnerable to natural disaster shocks, yeah. i.e., you know, hurricane, hurricane. tropical cyclone, etc. That if it occurs can put the government out mm -hmm. because it, you know, lots of expenses. Yeah. Now, because we've worked so hard on rehabilitating our economy, and I want to give you an example of how I, my real practical experience that really, uh, let me give it. Back in 2016, 
when Jamaica was about to allow me this detour. Mm -hmm. yeah, when Jamaica right. was about to prematurely terminate the agreement with the IMF. It was called an extended fund facility and enter into a new agreement called a precautionary standby arrangement. And we're moving from the extended fund facility was 980 million and the new one was $1.6 billion. It was a big deal. Nobody was expecting it. And that's what made it even a better, a bigger deal. Mm -hmm. right? The big bosses from the IMF coming down for the announcement. And a little storm began to develop in the Eastern Caribbean. I forget the name of it. Was it Matthew? I'm not sure. I can't remember. This is 2016. Mm. And this is Jamaica here. And we track, everybody's tracking the storm, the hurricane, and it's doing this. And it is the closest direct hit that Jamaica has had in 30 years. Closest to a direct hit. And we were all convinced that this hurricane was going to hit Jamaica directly. Mm. Right? As a result, people from the fund, they packed up, headquarters called them back, left Jamaica, the big announcement was not going to happen. <laughs> and in that moment, I was not Minister of Finance then, I was Ambassador of Economic Affairs, mm -hmm. and I was responsible for uh, the, uh, the relationship with the multilaterals, and mm -hmm. I negotiated this program, this mm -hmm. $1.6 billion program. Right? And then it became, it became abundantly clear to me, my God, if this thing had hit, we started to calculate that what we were negotiating couldn't help us. Yeah. yeah. And it became abundantly, and it just calculating what the reversal would have been, all the progress made by the previous administration would have gone out the window. Mm. And it became very clear to me. And I said, look, if I get that, if I get the chance, I will never leave Jamaica exposed to the effect of natural disaster again mm. in terms of fiscal exposure. Because I came face to face with the possibility of what that would mean. Meaning I, in that, that over that period, I'm having discussions with IMF about how we would have to upsize what we were about to announce. Yeah, mm. it's almost like you have to think of measures, countermeasures, counter, counter, counter Exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah. In the end, thank God, praise God, the hurricane did this, and it went up and hit Haiti. Unfortunately, 800 people died in Haiti. Wow. And that was a hurricane that went all the way to New Jersey and reduced New Jersey to being like a developing country. Mm -hmm. I think we can all remember that. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So what we decided to put in place a multi-layered strategy of financial instruments that delivers resources in the event of a natural disaster. The layers are, we have a, um, we have, allocate a couple hundred million every year in the budget. That's the first layer. The second layer is that we have, uh, we're developing a natural disaster fund where we put money aside yeah. mm. every year to build up to help us in natural disaster. So like just not just help the government, but like people who need to rebuild that. The, yes, well, okay. the government expenditure. So okay. in 2019, I had put $4.5 billion away in the contingencies fund. The contingencies fund up until that time had a maximum cap of $100 million. The cap was $100 billion from 1992 all the way to 2019. It made us say, look, this is crazy. We need to have buffers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we did something that was uncharacteristic. You know, politicians spend money if we get vote. Yeah. yeah. Right? No, we took $4.5 billion and put it away in the contingencies fund in 2019. Do you know that the first amount of COVID money that we were able to support people with Osama. from Osama. a year later wow. was from that contingency. Wow. Mm. That is why we were able to give people benefits even before the United States. Yeah, mm. That's true. Mm -hmm. Okay? Because you have to remember, resources have to come from somewhere. Mm -hmm. COVID hit, revenues tanked mm -hmm. while expenses remained. Mm -hmm. Because we had this tucked away and because the purpose of it was for emergency, we drew down from it and the first bit of set cash and compassionate grant money came from the proceeds of this contingency fund that we had put away in 2019, in March mm -hmm. of 2019. Didn't know that COVID was coming. Mm -hmm. yeah. But again, principle. The mm -hmm. principle is just like Joseph in the Bible. Save for a rainy day, <laughs> yeah. fill up the barn in mm -hmm. good times, right? We 
obviously after spending it on that, we were able to replenish it. Yeah. Right. So we have it back at that level. Okay. Right. Now, so that's it. The second layer. The other layer we have what we call a credit contingent claim, which is a, a program with the Inter American Development Bank that allows us to draw funds down in a natural disaster. Normally you'd have to go through the loan agreement and due diligence and all kind of paperwork and it take months. What we have done is to do the paperwork up front and they have the funds there. Within days of a natural disaster, we would get it. Yeah. Okay. And then we have the Caribbean Catastrophe Reinsurance Facility. That's been around for a long time. We continue that. And then the final layer is a catastrophe bond, which is capital market investors, international wealthy institutions who want to diversify their risk, put money up, and they put it with the World Bank. And the deal is we pay a premium every year. And the deal is if there's an event, all of that money comes to us. All of the principal comes to us. You understand what I'm saying? So you put up $100. Mm -hmm. You pay X dollars per year, whatever that X is, as premium. And if there's a catastrophe, that $100 comes to you. Oh. And that's called a catastrophe bond. We first did it in 2021. And we became the first small country to issue it. And we're going to issue it again in 2024. Now, what I was saying is... Close to election year, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is protection. This it's insurance. Door, you remember what I talked <laughs> earlier about delayed yeah. gratification? <laughs> this is delayed gratification. There's no benefit. Yeah. Right? There's yeah. no benefit. This is what you call downside protection. Mm. Right? Now, what I was saying to you is that in Standing Finance Committee, I kind of spoke about what we're doing. Mm -hmm. And the arrangers and issues of the bond, you know, send messages down. Wait, you know, I know that you have to talk about it, but if if you say too much more, you're going to compromise the issue. Mm. No. So that's why yeah? you can't. And, and that's a practical example. Yeah. Right? This is a, this is not something that's in the public domain that ever that, that's a political issue. Mm -hmm. But it's it's real yeah. and it demonstrates the point. I got calls from Hong Kong, right? We're, we're going to, um, that's where I'm headed next week mm. to, on this matter of launching the catastrophe, the catastrophe bond mm. in international capital markets. And, you know, they sent, you know, that, look, if you say too much about it in advance, mm. you're going to compromise the issue and the placement of it. So there'll be comp Complete transparency. Complete transparency. We're Once doing it's it, done. but yeah, we have to be. If you want the thing done, mm -hmm. you got to do it in a particular. So I, I mean, the mm. question is then: is not that I guess um, the opposition is worried, and I guess many people can be. Is not we are not going to be held in sort of like a squeeze with the persons who are going to be buying or or who are we tr we're trading for well, the we bond That's what we don't want. Okay. Right. That's what we don't want. So okay. we have to preserve, we have to keep the upper hand. Okay. You know what I mean? Okay. So that we, when we go to, you know, how financial markets work, they'll gang up on you. Mm. <laughs> if they have the information too far in advance. Oh, it's like Wall Street. It, well, that's where we're raising, that's, well, we're saying international capital markets. Okay. That's what we mean. Like insider right? trading. Oh, yeah, okay. so we have, okay. to, we have to keep, and when, when that time comes, mm -hmm. it will be, everybody will be aware. Mm. Okay. You mentioned politics. You ever get tired of it? Uh, the politics, like, uh, say, like, can't I just crunch numbers and <laughs> <laughs> solve the, the nation's you know, economic problems? Like, why do I have to? Why does everything need yeah. to be politicized? Why am I have to play these political games? Yeah, and, like, yeah. Ever, yeah. Because, and I mean, to add to that, because I was saying, like, your budget, the speech, like, numbers and finances is pretty much boring really but your budget presentation i mean for the past couple of years have been very animated and like playing into the politics and of somewhat it all. palpable too. Yeah. yeah so it's like it's like i mean uh, to answer or to ask or to Add. piggyback <laughs> on our question yeah. like are you tired and it's like is it it was one of the ways i like, trying to amp up your your speeches and you know your presentation in a way of like being tired of politics right Look, first of all, those presentations are, that's who I am. Okay. Okay. And I am a visual communicator, a graphical communicator. Yeah. I'm I feel very like comfortable I with. Should with, I have a screen for <laughs> you? <laughs> exactly. You know? With every presentation. Yeah. yeah. I'm yeah. very comfortable with numbers. Mm. And, 
you know, I'm able to get that across to people because I fundamentally understand it. Mm. I can turn it up without it in my head. I can turn it around. I fundamentally understand it and I I'm able to get brain. it across, right? <laughs> so um, this thing now is about serving people ultimately. Mm. You know what I mean? And a big part of serving people is to engage them. And I love engaging. That's one thing you find. I am available to the media, you know, all the time at a moment's notice. I make myself available. Yeah. It's a part of serving people, mm. right? That this is not my business. This is the people's business. Yeah. And as a result, I, uh, I make it a duty. And it's something I enjoy, mm. right? I enjoy and I'm just be who you see is who I am. And, um, you know, so the answer to your question is that I enjoy engaging. So even the red yeah. car thing, that was your idea, that was <laughs> part of it. This will be good to engage the people. You know, I was, you know, was going to bring one here because you can't give any trouble. You should have. You should have. But, you know, uh, yeah. But last year, if you were paying attention, I used the word yellow card. I said, look, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I go, you need a yellow card for uh, that. Oh, great, no. You know? Yeah, this year. And, yeah. you know, so I said, wait, this year, the yellow card clearly not work. So my <laughs> My fucking flash should have read. But you know, because even your foray into politics, like you, you've always probably been a businessman. Like yes. the world of politics is probably is it way different from very business? Different. Very different. Yeah, there like, are similarities, but it's a whole different beast mm. altogether. So, like with those things in mind, like we talk about, you know, making things palpable. Do you do those things with the youth in mind specifically? You know, we talk about engaging people, but you know, the youth especially can find like budget presentations and debate kind of tedious and boring. So you do them Absolutely. Together. Well, I mean, I introduced the Citizen's Guide to the Budget. Mm. Did not happen before my time, mm. which is a publication that appears in the newspapers uh, during the budget season that, you know, 12 pages long, but that puts the budget into simple terms that people can understand. Mm. The feedback I've gotten from that is that people appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. And it is something that people look forward to. In addition, we have uh, innovated the school budget tour where we go into high schools and we explain the budget. We can't go to every high school, right. but we go to a uh, selection of high schools in the corporate area and in the rural area this year. We'll add the rural areas to it and we explain the budget. So, yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. the, in, the intention of the, my style and method of communication is to ensure that all people can understand, but absolutely young people who are the future yeah and in our population you know a majority of our population is below the age of 30 or thereabouts yeah. let's let's get to this beef now what's happening this beef because you defended you know julia told the speak of the house you know, <laughs> against mark golden and you called him um sink i read it here yeah he undermined contradicted emasculated the very people he has appointed right no so what i said is that we have two instances of senior members of the, of the opposition coming out and making affirmative statements. Mm -hmm. I meaning statements in support of a move by the government. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then sometime later, in some cases days later, in other cases months later, the, the Mark Golding comes out and essentially overturns those decisions. Mm. What I said is that that undermines those figures, mm -hmm. that that emasculates them, and that makes it difficult to trust what they say. Uh, the two practical examples are the first that I'll give is when we introduced the parliamentary Salary. salaries last year, and I gave a, a first of all, I, I had a meeting with five or six opposition MPs where the principle was outlined, which is clearly that um, salaries, minister salaries are benchmarked to Permanent secretaries, it's been that way for 50 years. MPs are benchmarked to ministers. And that is what we're going to do and keep, etc. And those persons shall remain nameless, but there was support. That market sensitive okay? too? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it was definitely market sensitive until I made it, until I did the speech. Right? <laughs> yeah. And then when I gave the speech, which had the details, mm -hmm. Julian Robinson got up and said, the opposition is basically the opposition has no issue 
with what the minister has announced. He didn't say me, Julian Robinson. Mm. He spoke for the opposition. Said, uh -huh. Now I say to you now, if the opposition did not support it, it would not have gone through. Mm. And it's the, one of the reasons why we haven't had this reform, certainly for parliamentarians in the past, because government and opposition could not agree. Mm. Back in 2003 was the large, last major effort when Prime Minister Patterson was in charge and he tried hard, but he could not get the then opposition to agree. And so it didn't go ahead. Mm. Similarly, if the opposition had said plainly and honestly that they were against it, it would not have happened. Well, Wait, so Julian yeah. Robinson got up and said the opposition is for it. And then days later, when the days later, and the backlash, yeah, Golding, the leader of the opposition, Mark Golding, releases a press release saying the opposition is against it. That is what I was saying okay. undermines and emasculates Julian Robinson because who going to believe him again on a, on, a, on a big issue if Mark is not sitting beside him? The second example is when. Philip Hallwell got up and publicly supported the elevation of the of deputy speaker, speaker. Yes. who mm. happened to be the wife of the prime minister to mm. the position of speaker, which means, and he did so on behalf of the opposition, which means the principle of Mrs. Holness serving as speaker, though she happens to also be the wife of the prime minister, was not something that the opposition was objecting to. Yes. Now, fast forward several months and there's a disagreement on specific issues and let me be very clear the leader of the opposition and the opposition has every right to disagree on the things they disagreed on mm -hmm. my argument is not over the substance of what they're disagreeing on mm -hmm. my argument is that what you ought to do is to pursue those arguments don't turn back on a principle mm. that you have publicly agreed to meaning it's kind of like it's, 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 um, you, you have agreed to a principle. Now there's an argument on a specific point. Argue the specific point. Take the point. You, you never know who would be there to support you. Take the point to the people. But then they'll go back now and say, this principle I we no longer you. agree to. Yeah, That's the you. point I'm saying. That's not principled. It's like the examples I'm giving you earlier of principle when I'm faced with some of these decisions. If you are going to be flip-flop on your principles, Right and willy nilly on your principles, then people can't trust you. Mm. They have to know what your principles are, and you apply your principles to each situation. So I am not. I am. I am supporting his right to challenge the speaker in a respectful manner mm -hmm. on things that he might disagree with. He is within his right to do so. Okay. What I'm saying is, don't use the cheap card, right, of overturning something that we know that your party supported. Okay. And then what's more, what I was saying is that in how he referred to the speaker, uh, he referred to her essentially, he, he basically said, you know, the decision of the government to appoint the wife of the prime minister. Okay, it is true that she's the wife of the prime minister, but in that context, there's a more important relationship, in, meaning for the elevation. Yeah, yeah. And that context is that she was deputy, deputy. speaker. Oh, yeah. Right now, this is what happened to women a lot. That we we define women, and I'm not I'm not using the word of misogyny. I don't know where misogyny comes from. This is I am not making a claim of misogyny at all. Mm. I'm saying that what we do is we undermine women when we speak about them in their relationship to a man, uh -huh. where there are other ways of describing them that are more appropriate for the context. So somebody who was a deputy speaker who now gets promoted to become speaker. You don't refer to the first reference. The first and only reference can't be wife. The, one of the references has to be deputy speaker. Wife is relevant. I'm not saying yeah, wife shouldn't true, be there. Like, you can't go around it. You can't go around it. <laughs> yeah. It's a wife. Yeah. You can't go around it. But to leave out deputy speaker, right? It sends a message to people that she's there just because she's wife. Oh. She's, she, there was no intention for her to be speaker when she was appointed deputy speaker. Everybody thought that she'd be deputy speaker for the entire term. Mm -hmm. There was a speaker there. There was an unplanned event, an unfortunate event that developed, and the speaker was no longer available. In every system that we know, the deputy succeeds the, the person who is the principal. Mm -hmm. And I, my position is that to be the 
to be balanced in the critique and to be respectful in the critique, you must include the fact that she was deputy speaker, not just wife. True, she I is wife, I, no. but she's deputy speaker who happens to be wife. Because I guess the fact of her being wife raises some concerns that the position as wife could trump the position as the, tr the position of speaker of the house in regards to matters certain of the government. matters of the government. Right. So, and I mean, and in defense yeah, of Minister, yeah, and but, in but, defense but, of Mark, Mr. Golding, he mm -hmm. was saying that at the time he agreed to um, installing her as the, the, the speaker of the house, but is due to, I guess, issues um, in parliament or parliamentary issues or procedures that she... Yeah, and, and, and again, that. my response to that is mm. to be respectful to her as an individual. Okay. Okay? Mm -hmm. Then what you do is you challenge her as an individual. Say, I don't believe you're being a good speaker. You're being a bad speaker. You're, you're you know, I believe that what you're doing is wrong. Right? You, what you do is you, you deal with the substance of the issue. And about this, you this don't, substance is a conflict of interest her, of her being the wife of the prime but, minister. But here is where that goes. Here is where that is wrong. Mm -hmm. The position, whether you believe in the position or not, okay, the position that she's adopted on these issues was the same position that the person before her had, Marissa Dalrymple. Mm -hmm. Was Marissa Dalrymple the wife? No. No. So it is clear that the position is independent of being wife oh. because it was a position before. And Mark Golding knows that. And that's my point. Mm. Okay, this is not a position that was arrived at because of being wife. It was a position that Marissa Dalrymple held. And when she demitted office, she passed, passed on the same issues. On, <laughs> wrote memos, passed on the issues, said to the speaker, etc. Mm. Okay, so if you're respectful of an individual, you don't jump to their marital relationships to explain you, you know, you see it for what it is. Mm. The person who she succeeded had that position mm -hmm. and she merely has continued the position of her predecessor the predecessor was not wife therefore the position was not arrived at because of wife okay understood understood yeah so you know look, no, 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 we've no, no, we've no, no, I'm, I'm all going <laughs> yeah <laughs> no but i'm not no no we're not we, we, i talked to mark already uh, it's important that you understand yeah right? uh, so no, let me be very clear that the government supports the position of the Auditor General. Mm -hmm. I have been on record that I believe that the office of the Auditor General plays an indispensable role in our society. Jamaica could not function without the Auditor General playing the role that she does. The, just her mere presence mm -hmm. and the fact that she's around may, means that people observe procedures. So her role is critical and her role is protected by the Constitution. She doesn't need my protection. It's protected by the Constitution. And, uh, you know, she produces reports that are of value. Sometimes we politicize the reports. Mm -hmm. We frame them That's in fine. narrow, selfish ways mm -hmm. um, that sometimes destroy people. Uh, but and, and that miss the essence of what we can learn from the reports. But the role is essential. And it's very important that the public become aware of the contents of those reports in as quick a time as possible. Mm. Those are principles that we all uh, believe in and support. Now, we'd yeah. be remiss if we didn't ask you about this. Uh, the people, them, you know, would have cost for real. The issue of the salary increase of the MPs. Yeah. Mm. Is, is, we spoke about unintended consequences, yeah. one of which was it pissed off all the people, mm. especially with the backdrop of, you know, numerous protests you know, public, um, public sector workers right. and, and all these things. Looking back on it now, is there a different way that you would have rolled that out? And did you expect the backlash, the backlash from the people when you did? Right. Okay. So there's, when with the benefit of hindsight, there's always ways you can do things better, mm -hmm. for sure. Right? The What's the substance of that matter? The substance, that, that issue has been... Uh, framed in the public domain in a way that is inflammatory. Mm -hmm. right? It's been framed in a way that uh, definitely leads to outrage. And the framing is politicians have gotten X percent increase. 300. Right? Whereas... <laughs> The and public sector again, about 20%. No, well, that's not, that's not no. true either. The, the public sector wages yeah. have gone up by $200 billion, mm. okay, over three years. 
uh, for the Ministry of Health, including all the nurses and doctors, Ministry of National Security, including all the police and soldiers, well, all the police, Ministry of Education, including all the teachers, went up by one, just those three alone, went up by $100 billion over three years. Wow. Okay? Previous rounds of increases have been $10 billion for everybody. So when you understand the scale, mm -hmm. okay, and not, you know, we need at least people sitting in your chair to be honest. Know, numerical yeah. reasoning and yeah. honest reasoning as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, the numbers are there for everybody to see. Now, this is what, what essentially happened here is not an increase picked out of a hat. It is simply that for the last 50 years, ministers of government have gotten a dollar more than permanent secretaries. Because permanent secretary, one dollar, one it was well, it's a dollar per week more, so fifty two dollars. Oh. Okay, that was the what dollar per week was set in nineteen eighty six. In nineteen seventy two, it was set at a dollar per month. Okay, so that's, that's why I said over the last fifty years, <laughs> ministers' salaries have been pegged one dollar for fifty years mm -hmm. over permanent secretaries from nineteen seventy two. To 1986, it was $1 per month. From 1986 to 2023, the time of this increase, it was $1 per week. Mm. All that happened, ladies and gentlemen, is that that same principle is applied to a new salary scale. That works for this climate. No, no. So... In other words, permanent secretaries' salaries have been adjusted. Yeah. The people who report to permanent secretaries have been adjusted. Yeah. The people who report to them, everybody has been adjusted. Yeah. Cabinet ministers make a dollar per week. So this is where ca permanent secretaries were. Cabinet ministers get a dollar per week more. Permanent secretaries were arranged there. Cabinet ministers get a dollar per week more. Mm -hmm. Meaning the same, pr talk about principles, mm. the same principle that has been in place for 50 years has been applied to the new salary scale. Hmm. This principle was in place the day before my statement in Parliament in May of 2023, and it is the same principle that operates today. The result of the principle is that there has been a significant movement in the salary, but it was not that there is a percentage that is chosen. It is simply, what do, do we want? Is it that we want to change a principle? and have permanent secretaries earn more than ministers, that's a conversation we can have, mm. right? Do we want them to earn, you know, you have permanent secretaries, you have chief technical directors, you have heads of departments. I mean, you know, we want the ministers to be, you know, below people in the ministry. That's a conversation we can have. There are consequences of that. Yeah, one of the yeah. reasons you gave, I believe, was to justify the pay increase, was to incentivize uh, politicians into staying in poli um, politics and younger people coming no okay so so as i said this was not an increase for politicians okay. per se mm. what this was was we made a radical change in the public sector salary scales mm. the salary scales were like that from the entry level to the top level and the salary scales did that all right in the old system politicians are prime Ministers are somewhere up here in the old system. Mm -hmm. They're not down here. No. They're somewhere up here. Yeah. Right? Now, when you move the salary scale from that to that, it's to, just, let's say to that, where, where are ministers going to be? In, it's it's going to be, they're going to be in the same relative position yeah. in the salary scale. So we are, so let me very, say it again. This was a previous salary scale, right? Bottom, top. Ministers of government were like here in the old salary scale. Mm hmm in the new salary scale, where the bottom is here and the top is you so know, way up there. So the bottom shifted to the, the top. No, no, I'm, not, I'm just saying the oh. bottom shifted up substantially. The yeah. bottom went up by um, about, about, eight, about over 100%. People used to get $10,000 a week. The people who used to get $10,000 a week come April of 2024 are getting $22,000 a week. Okay? So the bottom doubled. Okay? The top went up considerably as well the position of ministers in the scale the relative position is exactly the same we're in the same relative position is that the scale is different and and increased all right now what you know 
is it that we want to change our relative position in the scale? We can have that conversation. But all we have done is to apply the same principle that's been around for 50 years. That in a, if you have a sal if this is your salary scale, that's where you put ministers. And then it shifts. So you just right? like no, we've changed the salary scale, so that's where ministers are. So what I did in that op-ed, that op-ed was not about ministers, it was about leadership in the country. Mm -hmm. Right? Because there wasn't just it, no, I mean, we had principles of schools. What, what happened in our previous salary scales is that they were very compressed. Mm -hmm. The difference between entry level teacher and principal was very narrow. And the experience is that there's no incentive for the best or for people who have the capabilities to go into leadership mm -hmm. because you get all of the hassle of leadership, all of the administrative burden. But not the perks of the money. But not the perks of the money. So mm -hmm. what we did, if this was the teacher scale before, if this was a teacher scale before, we did the same thing, right? We the the the, the we increased the, the management salaries significantly mm -hmm. because we need and not, it's not gonna have an effect today. It's gonna have an effect over the long term. Mm -hmm. We need people who we need to be, there to be greater competition for the jobs with huge responsibility. Right. Okay? So I wrote that op-ed to explain that paradigm shift. Mm -hmm that we are moving to a paradigm shift where we're gonna put a premium on positions that have a big meaning position that can affect a lot of people. I mean, people hear that yeah. at least when they heard the op-ed, they, they heard- Read the op-ed. Uh, well, <laughs> <laughs> you know, they heard, um, we need to enrich politicians because, you know, we don't want them to leave politics. Uh, but what they probably heard was, you know, but at least what they, they know or what they feel is that politicians are already rich. Why do we need to enrich in them? Right. Yeah, and, and that, was, that, that would be a very unfortunate, untrue interpretation of the intent. As I said, that op-ed, of, first of all, addressed leadership across the, pu the mm -hmm. public service. Leadership in teaching, in uh, security, police, in health, health in the civil service, mm -hmm. and otherwise, right? Mm -hmm. That what this reform has done is to put a premium on for persons who are running, you're running $150 billion. We can't pay your market rate, but what we want is that the people are below you. There's a difference so that we get the more competent. You know many times in the public service, oh, I mean, I want that, too much work. I'm happy where I am. And the person is good as gold because the premium for the trouble was just not good enough. Yeah. Mm. So we're doing to put the, put the premium so we can, it makes a difference guys, having the right person in the position who can affect thousands or tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of lives makes a difference. Absolutely. Makes a big difference. Because and that's so why that's brain that drain is, is affecting our Correct. country. Yeah. No, with respect to politicians, what, the other thing in the opera that I said is that when you look at, I went and I am totally a data, data centric, fact driven, right? Empirical, meaning testing reality, mm -hmm. right? When you look at the number of persons who served in parliament from 1972 until present, there are about 300 persons who have served in parliament. And when you look at the median level of service, it's about 10 years. Yeah, okay. Okay? Parliamentary service is by no means for the vast majority of persons a career. We think of the people, of what dominates our minds are the people who have been there for 30 or 40 years because those are the yeah. people we know, we know best. Yeah, yeah we so, see them. Because we see them. Yeah. But, so we think that this is a profession where people go in and just stay for 30, 40 years and just collect. No, the, the data is there that can prove it, show it. Uh, it's there. I, I have download, I have it. I can share it. When you look at the average service or the median service, half of people, 150 out of the 300 people who served in parliament from 1972, served in parliament for less than 10 years. Mm. So these are what we call, these are structural uh, remuneration, right? It's not remunerate for an individual that they're gonna have for the rest of their life, mm. right? Politics is competitive. There's huge turnover. What we want is to have though levels of remuneration where people who have talent, who have, responsibility who don't are not born into wealth can afford to make the transition into politics without disrupting their lives yeah right so it makes it possible for more people to serve because even if you're going to serve for five years or for nine years for three years or for 10 years 
What we're saying, during that period of service, you are a middle manager at a bank, or you are have your small business in the country, or you are you know some professional somewhere that you want to serve, you can make that transition without uh, upending your life. And over time, not today, it won't be immediate, over time, over time, the competition for those jobs, meaning the number of people who are now available. There are a lot of people who are not available because doing it would mean, and doing it would mean that they would have to engage in sacrifices. I'm not, I'm not, they're, and they're honest people. I'm not here to, to scrape anything, mm -hmm. right? So I'm saying this is a systematic change for the long-term future of the country, way beyond my time, when you are gray and old, et cetera, et cetera. I'm already get gray. So for, oh, you're gray already. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> that what we can continue to have is a Jamaica where across the society, people see it worth their while mm -hmm. to take on the burdens of leadership, whether in the civil service or in the political arena. Because I, mean, I was thinking about you, that you, you were the head of your... Yeah, company oh and you you're, you had to make a drastic shift yes, in pay. And he, yeah and even what is here now yeah. is it's I still mean, not compared to your pay increase way 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 below what I would have earned is it before. worth it right? again why no no why no, no, it so, so the point <laughs> I'm making earlier question <laughs> no so the, 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 you know the, the point I'm making to generalize beyond myself you know is that if we have a country mm. where only one people who have inherited wealth or two people who own businesses can afford to serve in parliament what kind of country are we going to have the argument against you know some of what you're saying is that people see business people enter in politics and then stay in for a long time and then they have to ask the question why so so right so we have a jamaica where business people can afford certainly in the previous dispensation when mm. parliamentarians earn three million dollars mm. a year we have that's a jamaica if you where people who have other sources of income mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. can afford to serve in parliament is that the jamaica you want that's what right you have to look is that the jamaica you want where people only people who have other sources of income can afford to serve in parliament because doing their job as a journalist doing their job out there they might be making five million dollars a year but to come into parliament it would mean they make three so they can't do it that's not a jamaica that we want no mm -hmm. It means that some people who have other sources of income, yes, will get higher salaries. But that's not the, that's a, that's a, a consequence, no doubt. But the bigger impact is that the room of possibility is now open to a larger swath of the population to say, look, if you give up your private life, give up your one source of income, you can come and serve for a term or two or three or four, <laughs> right? But it's mostly, as I said, half of the people terms, serve yeah. two terms or less. Mm -hmm. You can do that and not compromise your, your, way of living. your standard of living. Yeah. And for a country like Jamaica, where leadership has been the issue, and by leadership, I don't mean leadership at the top of the country. What I mean is leadership throughout the society. Mm. You know, ha across the board, across the board, what we need some people as as unpopular as it is. Some people believe this is some people, not people in politics, right, believe that this is one of the most fundamental reforms that we have made. Because the pain, it, the pain increase, not the pain increase. Having, having, <laughs> no, no, <laughs> framing, the frame. yeah, right, 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 having, yeah. having the structures in place yeah. mm -hmm. that open up the possibility of parliamentary service to wider groups of people. Pay increase make for shorter titles, Mr. Clark. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. And, and it, goes, it goes back to some of what we were talking about earlier, right? That, you know, if you're not motivated by principle, yeah. you're not going to bear that pain. Yeah. The pain that I went through by, you know, not pain, but they, you know, you're not going to bear that. You're just going to do what is you know, what expedient <laughs> and what is popular in the moment, mm. right? But if you're motivated by conviction, by belief, by principle, you're prepared to pay price 
for principle. Right? Yeah. But I know that you have to go, but my one of my final questions, like, you know, after of all the gains that you've made as um financial finance minister, you've been able to for the past seven years not introduce any taxes to the Jamaican people, which I think many people should recognize that that's that's a feat and that we're not drowning or you know we're diminishing as a country like you think that all the fears all the gains that you've made and if you guys should lose the election like you ever think about what that would be the consequences of what that would be for the country um look the first thing the people are sovereign okay we Mm -hmm. work for the people and the people uh make do what they have to do our job is to do the best job that we can, right? And present that job to the people. Mm. And I have full faith and conviction that when we present to the people what we have done, mm-hmm. yeah, uh, they will uh, do the right thing. And even with the, the local election that passed, and, mm. you know, I guess many people consider it a close victory for the JLP, but an overall victory for the PMP because of how close it was. Is that a signal... Um, for the party overall, like maybe there needs to be revamp of the communication or what the work that you've done, like how you need to communicate that to the people for mm. it to not be close again. Right. It's a, re- a, a tweaking of yeah. communication. Yeah. So as I've said before in other fora, we make it a habit to listen to the people, mm. right? And the election results definitely have a number of messages in them. I'm not one sort sort of who buys very easily, you know. You have to be careful that uh, a tendency of human beings is to use new information to confirm old beliefs. So if I believe this, I'm going to use this new data to say, see, I tell you, da 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 right? And that is a, a pitfall that we have to avoid. However, there is information in the results. I believe the information is more local in nature mm. than national, meaning okay. we have you know, contradictory, if you're to believe it's national, there are contradictory results in different local areas, mm-hmm. right? Um, and you know, by, and, by and large, you know, people you know, want to make sure that their lives are being improved in their immediate surroundings, their circumstances. And, you know, that is something that the government is focused on. And we, as I said, we're here to serve uh, the people, to listen to them, to respond to them. And, um, you know, you can be sure that the messages that are inherent in the results of uh, the February local government election Mm -hmm. are messages that the government uh, has heard and uh, is responding to. Yeah. So there's no fear. Like, is this an indication for what's to come for the national election? No. No. I don't think so. (laughs) Okay. Um, And another question too. What's the worst financial disaster that you think in your, as you said, you're a student of um, or economic history. Like, what's the worst financial disaster you think that we had to recover from? (laughs) 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 Well, one of the things I I definitely think, yeah, one of the things that we have, we have not come to terms with the consequences of the economic collapse of the late 1970s. Mm. And because it is shrouded in so much politics right. and you have a defensive reaction from one side yeah. Yeah. and you have like a punitive kind of whatever from the other side, mm-hmm. we're not able to have uh, an honest, conversation. An honest <laughs> data-driven conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Right? But I, I think we're going to have to understand it because it... it it absolutely influenced the economic outturns over the 50 years that followed. Mm-hmm. Right? Now, we have to also be honest about the causes. Some of the causes in the 1970s were external. We had two oil shocks mm-hmm. in 1974 and in 19, if I'm not mistaken, 1978, which would have had profound consequences. But we have to also be honest about the domestic policy errors of that era the capital flight and the consequences of that capital flight and have a conversation about it that's independent of the social advances. I mean, every time you raise it up, people talk about, yeah, there was social. Yes, that's true. You've talked about about that. Let's talk about the economic cost of it so we never repeat it. What's the capital flight though? What do you mean? Capital flight meaning money leaving Jamaica. Okay. People Mm -hmm. having money in Jamaica, not feeling comfortable with keeping money here and taking it away. Okay. It took us decades and we still 
have not gotten that back. Mm -hmm. And uh, before that era, Jamaica had entrenched macroeconomic stability mm -hmm. measured by we had our debt was 28 percent of gdp mm -hmm. in 1971 mm -hmm. that government came in in 1972 right. it was 28 percent by the end of the decade by 1979 the debt was like 88 percent and we never look back right our reserves were negative yeah. at the end of it inflation was out of control unemployment was high double digits and the debt was extremely high in the 19 it is our debt went even higher. Mm. There's no no currency in the central bank, no foreign currency. Mm. Government had to the only way you could get foreign currency is to borrow. Mm -hmm. uh, borrowed externally, to, you know, US dollar debt to get foreign currency. Instabilities in the economy. We had there were external things then as well, alumina price shock and Gilbert and so on. But just short story, we didn't solve the debt problem in the nineteen eighties. We had High inflation throughout the 1980s, mm -hmm. right? We had high unemployment throughout the 1980s, but we had high growth, 1986, 1987, 88, and 89. Though that is definitely a fact. Coming to the 1990s, still have negative reserves. The government is trying to solve that problem, liberalizes the exchange rate regime, and we discussed that earlier. Yeah. Financial sector crisis, debt moves all the way back up, right? Enter the global financial crisis at 125 percent. By the end of it, it's 145 percent. We're into 2013, and we know what happened. Thank God. From 2013 over uh, the recession, several right? yeah. several administrations, mm -hmm. uh, and we have managed to improve our situation. So, what you know, one way of looking at our economic history is the recovery from the 1970s has taken us 50 years. Mm -hmm. Do you know? that the per capita GDP, and per capita GDP means if you take the size of the economy, you divide it by the population in real terms, in real terms, the per capita GDP was 20% lower in 2018 than it was in 1972. Interesting. All right. Whereas for countries like Barbados, even though they went through their debacle, yeah. it was higher than 1972. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For Trinidad, it was much, much higher. Dominican Republic, much, much higher. Yes, there were other gains. Absolutely. But here, talking about the economic results, what we had from the 19... We, our per capita GDP in real terms rose rapidly in the 1960s and is a historical fact. It's not the only story Okay, there are other achievements, mm -hmm. but the economic story is that our per capita GDP in real terms from 1972, 2018, we, are wor we were worse off in 2018 than 1972. Wow. That is a story that we have to get, we have to internalize, mm -hmm. not for partisan gain, yeah. not for partisan gain, but to ensure that we don't make that mistake again. It has been extremely costly for our country. We're better not No, but we, so today, uh, yeah. yeah, as I've said before, it doesn't mean, and we have to talk about this another time, it doesn't yeah. mean that everything is honky-dory for everybody. No. no. But the right. macro variables yeah. today are better than they have been at any time over mm -hmm. the last 50 years. There is growth in the economy, but yeah. not everyone feels it's it. It's like, yeah. you know, people say that the food, it's like, it's a lot of money and, you know, the, the dollar, USD, it's a Jamaican dollar. It's like, a, you know, the foreign exchange rate is ridiculous. Yeah. And, 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 so many people aren't feeling it, but the overall gains in the economy overall, like, it's yeah. good. So, you know, the way, again, you know, feelings are important in politics. Mm -hmm. But they're yeah. not But true. if you are going to assess mm -hmm. economics, mm -hmm. You know, using feelings will be misleading. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I get what right? you're saying. So feelings are important. Feelings dominate politics. Mm -hmm. When it comes to economics, if you want to understand what is happening, feelings can be misleading. Sometimes the feelings are tied to. But hear me, hear me on this. The, the hear me. And the well, feeling, well, you know, the the minimum wage in 2016, mm -hmm. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, uh, was six thousand Jamaican dollars, if I'm not mistaken, divided by the exchange rate, was about forty eight US dollars. Minimum wage come June is going to be fifteen thousand dollars divided by the exchange rate currently is about ninety six dollars. Minimum wage has doubled in U.S. dollar terms mm -hmm. under this administration. You cannot find any period in Jamaica's history, certainly over the last fifty years, where minimum wage 
has doubled in U.S. dollar terms over a similar period. That is what feeling it is. People's incomes have gone up, right? Jamaica's average income, when you average everybody in the country, was 5,000 U.S. dollars in 2016. The average income today is approximately 7,000 U.S. dollars mm -hmm. right, on average. Minimum wage has doubled, but average income has gone up in that way. You know, we have, there are 150, so, so incomes have gone up. We have more people in jobs, which means yeah, they're able to more. feed their families. They're able mm -hmm. to support their communities as a result. You know, we have been able to implement projects that improve lives at a scale that we have not been able to do before. We're buying 300 buses in across two years. Uh, we've never been able to afford that. We're buying 100 garbage trucks. We have never been able to buy 100 new garbage trucks. Mm -hmm. So... You know, it's imp it's important that, you know, we are data driven, yeah? Um, because the the examples of the improvement to lives are numerous. If you look at, you know, path payments in US dollar terms, in real terms, they're how much better off they are now as a, you know, as opposed to a couple of years ago, or certainly at the start of the administration. You know, there are, there were 400, let's give you a little anecdote. There were 400,000 cars on the road in 2016. In 2022, even with COVID, there were six, there were 200,000 more, a 50% yeah. increase in the number of cars. You can't, I mean, we're not talking about one car. We're talking about people being able to increase uh, well, well, we need less by 50%. Right. Huh? Yeah. We need less car traffic. Exactly. Or more road. Exactly. And more, more road. road. Yeah. Yeah. But the point I'm making, right, is that all you have to do is look at the debt. Look, we have more businesses being formed by young people mm. than ever before. Yeah. In terms of, you know, on an annual basis. Every year there's another record despite COVID. We recovered from COVID. We lost 150,000 jobs. People's lives would have been ruined if we didn't pursue policy that led to a stable economy and to economic so recovery. In and of itself is an achievement. Yeah. Yeah. So, so we, we, people's uh, pension benefits have gone up considerably. NIS pension by over 40%. Mm -hmm. The tax breaks that we've been able to do, you pay less in GCT today than you did before. Sure. The rate of GCT went from 16.5% to 15%. The numbers are, the, 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 you have to carry, call me. I know you're, you, I'm getting a wrap-up signal <laughs> from your producers and I know I'm going on. But look, I, there's a lot that we can talk about yeah. in terms of uh, the improvement in people's lives under this administration. It's just, why is it not? It's just that there's a, there's a lot more yeah. to be done, yeah. right? And we have to increase and improve the rate at which we do it. The roads are terrible. Mm -hmm. yes. We have to address the roads. Yes, this right? is one of people's primary <laughs> yes. concerns. Yes, we got to address the roads. That, that determine <laughs> the whole heap of votes. <laughs> we have we'll just to fix the, my road. We have to fix the road. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we're coming this year with a Spark program, mm -hmm. right? Uh, $20 billion this year, $20 billion next year. Ne I want to give you a, a scale of improvement. Every year, road allocation is $5 billion. This year, we go into normal five plus 20. 20 so we go from $5 billion to $25 billion on road. That is a demonstration of listening to the people and crafting the fiscal program to respond to a primary concern of the people. We announced it from last year. Mm -hmm. So everybody knew it was coming. Yeah. Yeah. So we are in a position today that we weren't before where we can't do everything one time, but we can take on big problems and devote resources to them and solve them. Public sector workers were in a bad position over 10 years. We devoted $200 billion unheard of before mm. i want you to understand that the increase in public sector compensation between year x and year y between the period 20 let's call it 20, 2010 to or let, no, no let's say 2013 to 2022 right crossing two administration you're talking 10 billion dollars for the entire public service that is have a, an extremely potent example of how the environment has been able to improve people's lives. But we can't do everything one time. We 
we pick public sector compensation, we address it. Now we move into roads. We're going to pick roads and we're going to address it in a major way. Right? It won't solve everything, mm -hmm. but it will be very different from the past. Mm -hmm. We'll pick another problem. Prime Minister Health. announced, well, we're yeah. doing four hospitals at the same time. Mm -hmm. When last have you in your lifetime heard four hospitals being built, modernized, upgraded at the same time in Jamaica? We couldn't I don't do that. Think in my lifetime, my, my mother, your father, granny lifetime, they've all, right? They've all gotten progressively uh, uh, worse. Yeah. Before, yeah, so <laughs> that couldn't happen if yeah. we never had the macroeconomic fundamentals to make it happen, mm. right? So those are the tangible ways in which the improved macroeconomic fundamentals are allowing us to improve people's lives. You know what? What improve? There's nothing that improves people's lives more than public investment expenditure investment in parks roads bridges highways schools hospitals mm -hmm. it right people who are well off they can privatize certain services yeah. they have their own security company mm -hmm. they you can live in gated communities the roads park. inside the communities are maintained privately mm -hmm. you even have your own water storage you might even have people who do something with your garbage, right? Mm -hmm. You know, they're able to privatize. So they're not affected. Yeah. The people who are affected by public services, by and large, are persons who are in the other category of, in terms of income, mm -hmm. right? And what, what our program is and what our program has been to increase the space for public investment expenditure that can improve people's lives mm. and we have done more public parks the prime minister has done more public parks than any government in recent time harmony park and you know his vision is there's a public park in every parish mm. right we're doing in my constituency what was a there was a dust bowl it was called a flower park before i was born <laughs> Right? It was a dust bowl for all of my life. We turned that into a park for the people of Marbley. Where? Um, in Marbley. Marbley. Right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Prime Minister mm -hmm. is doing the Portmore Resilience Park, having done, which is 26 acres of park. That needs yeah, to be done. 26 yeah, acres cool. of park, yeah. park for the dust, people of Portmore. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How many beach park was done? And we're going to be, so these things could not happen if we did not have the macro economic fundamentals in place. And uh -huh. we're leveraging those fundamentals to improve people's lives. All right, no need to pat yourself for that. No, no, pat myself. I am, and, and shit, you asked me a question. Maybe you never won. Maybe you should you ask me that question. Good job with the Sharing with the people. Yeah. Sharing okay. with the people. I'll vote for you again. Yeah. <laughs> That's what you're supposed to say, not me. Yeah. I'm not me. Yeah. Uh, differently though, we, we give thanks for you taking time or what, nearly two hours? Yeah. yeah. Two hours, no. oh. Out of your time, I'm running the finances of the country. Yeah. yeah. To, to talk and speak. I barely us. understand half of it, but <laughs> yeah. I believe you it's good. Yeah, man. Well, it was a, it was, I, I'm so happy that I ran into you, that I met you. Right. It was fortuitous. Give thanks again. So, where can yeah. people follow you on the social media? Right. Um, I am on Twitter. Mm -hmm. um, I think Twitter is at Nigel Clark J A. Yes. Mm -hmm. I am on Instagram. Um, God, I don't even know my social media handles. Um, Dr. That, Nigel Clark J.A. That's Dr. Nigel Dr. Clark J.A. Yeah. I'm Dr. on Dr. Facebook. <laughs> Um, which Dr. is Nigel Dr. Clark. Nigel Clark J.A. Yeah. No, no, it's just no, Dr. Nigel, Dr. Nigel Clark. Clark. Yeah. Thank you. So Twitter is Nigel, at Nigel Clark J.A. Mm -hmm. Instagram is Dr. Dr. Nigel, Nigel Clark, Clark J.A. Yeah. And Facebook is Dr. Nigel Clark. I must Clear. say, though, no, Minister, you've changed dramatically. You think so? <laughs> yeah. No, it's, no, no, it's just that you're seeing... <laughs> You're seeing more of who I am. The country's stressier. No, I'm I, the country's stressier. No, no, no. I am the same. I am the same person. It might be that uh, may, maybe, you know, you're seeing more of who I am. But, you know, people have known me for years. You're no, younger. I'm the same. Oh, change physically. Yes. Oh, God. You're like, I receded. Yes. Right? yes. <laughs> so my hairline has receded. Yes. Jamaica hairline. is stressy. And yes. And I have gray hairs coming up. Yes. Tell you. It's a yes. tough job, you know. 
I want to wish it on my yeah, worst yeah, enemy. Yeah, it's a tough bad. job. No tough, way. tough, tough, tough. But I yes. guess I've I'm, I'm always heard that you're one of the most fine, um, qualified person to do mm. the job that you're doing. And yeah. the country seems to be in a better place. Blessing. And you choose to do it. So, Blessing. Not good. <laughs> yes, indeed. Not good, you know. Yeah. All right, people. That's Dr. Nigel. There you go. Include the doctor. The and he yeah. earned every bit of every that bit doctor. Of that <laughs> Dr. Nigel Clark. I had a fix of the week. A big sound of your big tune. Ja all is Emmanuel I woe. Ja Gideon, I'm a Gideon. The Gideon, I'm a Gideon. The Gideon, I'm a Gideon. Well, Gideon go bustin' out the mat again. So much oppression, poor people face right now. Them crying out for freedom. Them crying out for free speech. Then said them off to stand up like them black liberators, like Malcolm X and Martin Luther and the ancient monarchy where compare the ways. Free up black people from it, tear them them fence. Yeah, Gideon, I'm a Gideon. The Gideon, I'm a Gideon. The Gideon, I'm a Gideon, well, the Gideon go busting out the mat. I listen, I see, I, the power of the Trinity, give us the teaching of his majesty, and we know war, no devil philosophy. Not ten trickle level for man's skin is abnormal, significant, well, to the color of his eye. Remember all the war done in 1935. This is Sticky Stucky Sweet TV with Keith Gargan. Good, healthy food with the X Factor. So give it a like, share, subscribe, and touch up that notification bell. And that is it. Look at that.